How was the international break for you? Uh, it was a mixture of emotions. Uh, overall, it was it was good. It was a good trip. Um, the final outcome was a bit negative. You know, we lost on penalties and a playoff match, which isn't isn't ever really nice. Um, but other than that, it was good. It was nice to be back with the Danish guys and be integrated with them again. Yeah, overall, it was a decent trip. Given that you were you were away on international duty, did it make it a bit easier for for you and the other players that were away after that defeat to St Mirren um, before the break that you kind of continued straight on to to other games, whereas the guys that were left behind were left to I suppose think about that and what went wrong and try and put that right. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I was out of the the Celtic environment, which I guess is somewhat an, an escape in in a certain way. Um, but at the same time, we when we got back, when was it? Was it today or yesterday? Yesterday we reflected on the St Mirren game because we were all back together as a group and, you know, we, we looked at what we could have done better, um, like we always do, regardless of the result. And, yeah, there was, it was obviously obvious it wasn't wasn't our best performance and not our usual level, but we've got a chance tomorrow to, to, to put it right. Hi, Matt. Um, you seem to be really enjoying your football at the moment this season at Celtic. Can you put a, a finger on why you're you're performing so well? Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm, I think I'm just, I'm prepared for, for a good, a good level of football, you know, in terms of pre-season, I had a good pre-season, this time I wasn't here, last pre-season to kind of get a full foundation of fitness in my body and stuff, so this time I've come in fresh, I feel like I've, I've tweaked a few things, you know, nutrition wise and sleep wise, and I think all the little things, they add up, um, so yeah, phys physically, it's probably the best I've felt. Um, and then when you feel good physically, the rest kind of takes care of itself sometimes. So um, yeah, for me, that's probably been the main difference, I'd say, my physical stuff. And I've always been quite comfortable technically. So I think adding that physical you know, presence or power to my game should help me like, go to another level. You mentioned how you've always been comfortable technically. How much are you enjoying playing in this mid midfield where you are surrounded by other very good technical players who seem to be on your wavelength. Yeah, I think that's that's the main point. When you're on the same wavelength as other players, everything just clicks more naturally. Um, it's more enjoyable when you know where a player is going to be, where they know where you're going to be when they've got the ball as well. Um, I don't think that just comes down to the quality of our of our players. It comes down to the structure we play in and and the system. Because if we didn't have that structure in place, then it would be hard to find each other the way we do. Um, so I think you can you can tell really by the connections we have on the pitch, it comes from the structure first and foremost. Thanks, Sean. Well, it was uh, nearly a year the team went um, before sustaining the first uh, domestic defeat. What happens in that sort of situation? You just reset and try and go on another long run? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we ever look too far forward or too far back. So I wouldn't say our mentality is going on a long run. Uh, right now, the mentality is full focus for Motherwell tomorrow and then we'll worry about the games after that. Um, yeah, naturally it was disappointing to, to lose the game and lose it the way we did because probably wasn't the way we wanted to play or usually play. Um, but we reflected on it like we do with any other game. You know, if we win 9-0, if we lose 2-0, we're still going to reflect on the game and look at what we can do better. Um, yeah, and I think there was obviously lots of things we could have done better. Um, but yeah, we've got a chance tomorrow to react. Mm. There's a lot of games coming in uh, between now and the, the World Cup break. Um, as a player, do you still want to be in, involved in as many as you can? Yeah, no, I think every player wants to play every game if they could, you know. Um, but we've got a lot of football coming up, so I don't think anyone's going to be able to play every minute. Um, you know, just in terms of top performance, you need everyone to be chipping in when you've got that many games in a short space of time. So. Yeah, naturally, I'd like to play as much as I can, um, but I know that if I'm not playing, it's, it's for the benefit of the team. Matt, you mentioned obviously it was mixed uh, emotions after the, your under-21 uh, game with, with going out penalties, but obviously getting the goal yourself, do you, do you feel that you've given yourselves every chance up to now to, to maybe break into that World Cup squad? Is, it, is that a focus for the next couple of months? Um, yeah, no, I think I've got a chance. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a focus. Uh, I kind of tried to focus on what's in front of me right now and, you know, the World Cup's not here for another couple of months still. Um, of course, I'll I'll try and do my best for Selwick and, you know, if it takes care of itself, then it takes care of itself. But if I'm not there, then, you know, I'm 
I'm not there. The team's doing really well right now, so my main focus is kind of trying to help out here, and you know, the rest will take care of itself. Obviously, you got some big results against Motherwell uh, last season. As the season went on, they get bigger and bigger, but they're under new management as well. Do you expect a kind of a different game from them? Uh, yeah, I expect a different game every time we play a team. To be honest, um, you know it was proven last well a couple of weeks ago when we lost that not every game's easy. There's no there's no easy game. So um, no, we're going to prepare for it like we always do. Um, we're going to go into it trying to impact the game like we do in terms of our style and the way we want to play. Um, and if we do that, then yeah, I think it we've got every chance of performing well. But in terms of Motherwell, I think. We know there'll be a, a decent side, you know. No game's easy, like I said. So just go into it prepared and go from there. Hi, Matt. Um, as a group of players, you spoke about how the next sort of six weeks, two months are going to be, how intense they're going to be, a game every three days and then a World Cup starting seven days after that. Yeah, we spoke about the intensity of the schedule. Um, like you said, there's pretty much a game every three days. Um, so I think that's where the size of the squad comes into play and the rotation is definitely going to going to be needed because the way we play it requires intense pressing running high intensity running um, so to perform at the highest level we can as a team we're going to have to use everybody as like we like we always do um, so we spoke about it in the sense of everyone basically be ready to, to impact um, and yeah take it from there You said that you think you've got a chance of making that World Cup squad do you look at these four Champions League games that you've got until the World Cup and perhaps they give you the best platform, the, the biggest platform to, to show the first team manager what you can do at the highest level? Yeah, probably. I think Champions League speaks for itself in terms of the competition. Uh, now, like I said, I'm not I'm not focused on the World Cup in terms of, you know, I'm not thinking about it every day. Obviously, it would be nice to be there, um, but I'd rather just focus on my, my approach to everyday life at Selwick. Um, and then, yeah, if I do well, then we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I'll be a fan regardless if I get called up or not. But naturally, I'd like to be there, of course. Hi, Matt. Um, during that chat that the players had, were you able to kind of come to any conclusions or pinpoint exactly what it was that went wrong? And, you know, because it was such an uncharacteristic display from the team. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were like, yesterday we reflected on it in a meeting in terms of, you know, the structure and tempo of play etc um, yeah we looked at what went wrong um, in terms of how we played it wasn't wasn't our best game of course um, but then when we watched it back we saw that there were a lot of things if we just did things slightly differently um, it could have been a very different game so I think it comes down to to fine margins especially with the way we play as long as we're firing and we're our approach to the game is is right um, then it's usually fine. I think that game was just, we are a little bit off in all aspects of our game. Um, yeah, and actually that, that showed. What is the, the mood like in, uh, within the players and training now? Is it was that a bit of a shock it's good. to the system? No, it's good now. No, we're good. Um, you know, the next game comes so quick in football. This one was a bit longer than others, so that was why it was a bit frustrating because we had to sit on it for, for a couple of weeks. But now we've got this game tomorrow and then after that, the game's just going to be coming thick and fast, so not too much time to really sit and dwell on it. All focus is kind of just on the next game and the next training session now. Hi, Matt. Um, was playing in the Champions League one of the reasons why you decided to sign for Celtic? And has the reality um, matched the dream? Um, yeah, the answer is probably yes to both your questions. I think it wasn't the only Champions League. I was aware of how big Celtic was as a club before I came, and I think... Yeah, when a club like so it comes in for you, um, especially with the position I was in, it wasn't. It was pretty much a no-brainer for me, to be honest. Um, yeah, and now obviously I'm fortunate enough to play in the Champions League. Um, so yeah, very grateful to be in the position I'm in. Um, a lot of things have happened very quickly. It's a squad confident that we can progress from the group uh, into the knockout rounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we've showed enough in terms of performances that we're capable at this level. Um, we can just, if we could just be a little bit more ruthless in front of goal, I think, in these in these bigger games, that'll put us in a position where we need to be. Um, 
and yeah, hopefully tomorrow gives us a platform to you know get that momentum back and take it into the Champions League midweek. Hi hey, Matt. Um, obviously, it's a real short period of time between going away in internationals, coming back to club duty. I know I've spoken to you about before about players in the group thriving off that short period of time, going from midweek into the weekend. But is it difficult adjusting back so quickly from international duty back to club duty? Because you'll have got a lot of information, obviously, of your international boss and you'll be coming back in to receive a lot of revenge. Um, to be honest, I probably find it more difficult going to international and having to, act, to adapt to that structure. I know the structure here so well and the system so well by now that... It's not really a problem. So in terms of training today and yesterday, um, it was very easy to kind of slot back in and get back into the rhythm of things. So um, yeah, now feeling good. Good stuff. Um, obviously, players don't want to lose games at all. I think Celtic fans last season looked at the season in chunks. I know you came in for that second chunk in January. Is it maybe better that we've had that chance to press the restart button going into the international break? I know people will say players will stew in a, a, and a result like St Mum, but is it a good chance to press the, the restart button when we're going into this? I think it's 13 games in 43 days. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, like you said, that's a lot of games coming up. So it's probably going to be hard to press the reset, but reset button again because there's so many games after another. Um, no, I guess it was it was somewhat a reality check in terms of we always need to be at our highest level, no matter who we play against. Um, so yeah, that consistency of performance is going to be very important going into this next block because of because of the amount of games we have.